Light viewers, my name is Brendan Kelly. I am the GMAT Club moderator that is going to be uh, hosting today's MBA Spotlight with CEIBS. And I'm joined today by Marianne, who is the Marketing and Admissions Manager for Europe, and she is going to give us a walkthrough of the program. So without further ado, I will go ahead and pass off the mic and, and jump off. So thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Brendan. All right. So welcome to the SEEP's presentation today about our MBA program. Glad you made it here. Just a second. Yeah, so who are you going to see today? Uh, I'm here joined by my colleague, Shiman Fu, and at the end, you will have the chance to actually talk to one of our students like Rita and Clark. So why should you do an MBA and what does it do for you? So first, you know all what an MBA is, but mostly people take an MBA either to upskill or because they want to have a career progression. Also, often we have seen that people take an MBA because they want to have a career switch either in the industry, their function or the geography they're working in. Obviously, this is connected to certain costs and it's a financial investment, but also a time investment. So it's really important that you make a very clear choice. And this presentation should help you to evaluate if this program might be the right fit for you. Our program is a full-time program and it's happening in Shanghai. SIP is the university I'm representing today and it stands for China Europe International Business School. The name evolved mainly because it's a joint venture between the Chinese government and the European Union. As you can see, we do have campuses in Zurich, Accra, Africa, Beijing, Shenzhen, and Shanghai, China. The main campus, as I mentioned, is in Shanghai, China. We do have a broad network of alumni. Uh, it's 24,000 and counting. We do have also very active alumni clubs across the globe, 63 in total. We have been ranked top five globally by the Financial Times ranking. And as a top business school, we also do have top faculty. As you can see, our 67 full-time faculty members are from 20 different countries and regions. All of them hold PhDs from other renowned universities. And it's very important to us that they do have experience in the markets that they're representing, that our mission is also fulfilling, which means from mainland China and Asia, but also have been working in Europe or other countries of the West. And one thing that I really want to highlight is that we do have this special China edge and Asia edge to our program, apart from giving you all the other aspects that any MBA program would give you. And this is also um, seen in the way we handle our case study center. The case center of our university has been partnering since 2019 with the Harvard Case Study Center. In addition to the faculty, we do have um, English professors, like, for example, the former Prime Minister of France, Dominique de Villepin. But what is the SIPS MBA program? Like I said, it's a full-time program taught in English, which has a duration of 12 or 18 months in total, and it's happening on the SIPS Shanghai campus. I would like to mention here that even though it's taught in English, because you're studying in China, Shanghai, you also have to take language classes. So this is an advantage of this program that you will be able to speak in Chinese up in graduation on a certain level. We have been evaluated top five globally, and we also have been named the top one business school in Asia. We are also accredited by the AACSB and the Equis Institution. Most importantly for you also would be who is going to study with me. So generally, there is around 157 students enrolled with an average work experience of 5.9 years. This is really important for a program because this gives you the chance to le learn from your peers who have been working in different industries. Um, the country coverage this year is 26 and counting, and we have an average of around 33% overseas students. We keep the overseas students ratio low on purpose to give you this Asian network through your peers. Compared to other programs, our average age is a little higher, mainly because we do have a work experience requirement of a minimum of two years. This is a very important slide, as you can see, this shows you the structure of our MBA program. For those who are joining from Europe, terms are not the same as semesters. Approximately two terms 
are equaling one semester in Europe. So the SEEPS MBA program does have seven terms, and it starts with the so-called foundation, where you, like the word says, put down the foundation for your whole MBA program, where we also have an intensive leadership kickoff event to settle where you stand as a leader and to foster your development during the whole program. And in term two, you can further go in depth with your core courses. And a very interesting aspect of the program are the electives. There's overseas electives, there's China modules in addition, but the electives mainly allow you to kind of choose the focus you want to be specialized in and according to your interests, obviously. The aspects we will further discuss later are the China modules and the overseas modules because they're very practical and hands-on. So you're not just in the classroom, you're really going to engage with your environment. And between term three and term four, there is the so-called integrated China strategy project. We'll also discuss this a little bit more in detail later, but basically this is a consultancy project where you have to consult a real company about a program that they have, and you have to resolve it for them with hopefully an implementable and executable solution. You're also given the opportunity to go and have an internship in China, which is very unique because normally students are not allowed to work in China. This gives you the opportunity to see differences in how business is done, but also be really part of this whole experience being in a different country. And then for those of you who are interested in joining the 18 month program in term six, there is the opportunity to go on an exchange abroad to one of our top 40 partner universities. If you choose the 12 month solution, this term will not happen for you all the electives that you would take on exchange, you will have to do in term one. So workload there will be increased. I usually recommend try to take the 18 month uh, program because this gives you a lot of time to engage in any extracurricular activities like our professional clubs, student clubs, executive forums, and many more activities that you can engage in. Like I mentioned, our electives really provide you with the chance to focus on what you really like to study and eventually you want to move on into, for example, if you're taking an MBA for a functional change, right? So you can either decide to take a general management focus or you can also combine one or two focus from marketing, finance, digital business or entrepreneurship. These are examples of all the overseas electives. So based on your preference, make sure you choose your overseas elective accordingly. If you're interested, for example, in innovation and startups, it's recommended to take the innovation in startup nation module in Israel. And if you're interested in manufacturing or industry 4.0, you're welcome to come to the Zurich campus where I'm located in Switzerland and experience how this is executed by companies here. Or you can also go to our campus in Africa, Ghana, where you can learn how to do business in Africa. The China modules are, I would say, an opportunity to really see how different China is as a country. Also, it is a chance for you to kind of grow as a person, have personal development. So there is different modules like with the overseas modules, but here you can really focus on something that has something to do with your personal and to get to know China better. So if you're really interested in prototyping and innovation, I would recommend you to go to Silicon Valley 2.0, which is Shenzhen. That's a city right next to Hong Kong, where all the big think tanks these days have set up companies to research and yeah, develop their prototypes. If you're interested in personal development and you really want to have a leadership in action experience, I would recommend you our Gobi Desert model. Uh, module where you can go through a challenge. This is mixed up sometimes with the global EMBAs as well. So this provides you with a networking opportunity right there. This is really challenging mentally and physically, but don't worry. You're, you're always uh, kind of observed that you're doing well. I can't tell you more. I don't want to spoil it for you. Here you can see some examples of our corporate partners for the Integrated China Strategy Project that I mentioned before. This is a broad mixture from companies from all over the world. Here are some of our partners where you could go on exchange. 
So let's say you're from Europe and you're joining our program for Shanghai and you're like interested in also getting an Americanized experience and you can go on an exchange in one of our partner universities there. But also feel free to go to any other university located in Asia because Asia is not just one. There is really different aspects in every market and country. If you would like to participate in one of our coordinated degree programs, there's three options. You can combine your SEEPS MBA with another MBA from either the Fletcher School, Johnson Hopkins or Johnson. So if you have a preference and additional interest, let's say in law and diplomacy, public health or management in hospitality. In addition to the study, day right and to studying a program you also want to go beyond the classroom and i think this is really important for you to get the insight in the country that you're studying in and also to build your network which is a really important aspect of any mba so when you consider an mba make sure that you really pay attention where do i want to work and what network do i need to do that so we do have 14 professional clubs and i call them professional clubs on purpose because Usually when you think about student clubs, you might think of them as fun activity organizing, not saying these activities are not fun, but they all have a professional touch. You're going to go to corporate visits. There is going to be executives invited for special topic talks, but also industry club meetups and a lot more. There is also the international club and obviously the leisure club, which is, I think, self-explanatory. In addition to that, student organized in those student organized clubs, we do have forums and seminars in addition, where you have the chance to meet up with industry leaders. There is topic um, designed industry forums like finance forums or luxury industry forums. They change every year, but they're a really great chance to engage with a broad network from all over the world. In addition, the study credits that you have to get there is the career development program while this is not credited it's a mandatory part of your program so this helps you to develop yourself and also to increase your knowledge about what do i want to do after i have finished my mba so we do have nine educating consultants at the shanghai campus and we organize overseas market exploration tracks where you get insight in markets that you might not know. There is on-campus career fairs and consultancy sessions that are happening. Of, um, also other recruitment events, like for example, how to really present yourself well on LinkedIn, but also assessments where we show you where do you stand as a person? What do you think you're good at? What you actually good at? And what do you want to do? And how do you have to develop during your MBA program to either get that upskill that you're looking for or the change in function geography or even career progression? We do have reciprocity partnerships with our exchange universities. So if you go to a university that do, does have this partnership with us, you can also profit from their career development center there. These are some MBA career placement highlights. The job offer receive rate of our graduates is 92.8%. And yeah, almost all of them accepted the offer as well. You can see on this slide as well more details about um, how many students actually look, have been looking for a job after graduation. Some of them are company sponsored, so they offer like or like obviously going back to the original employer. And that's 35 in this slide and there's different industries and some of them even started their own companies as we do have an entrepreneurship laboratory where we support you in setting up your own business and getting from your business idea to business plan and sometimes even execution and business setup. This is just what I mentioned. As you can see, this entrepreneurship lab works with three levels. Um, there is the entrepreneurship camp where you really get an insight and more additional knowledge about what it means to be an entrepreneur. In addition, there is the technology acceleration program and we connect you to our ecosystem. There is also a video that explains that better on our website and you can always write to Shivanju or me if you have any questions about this. This is not part of the curriculum, but this is something in addition that I would really enhance that if you're interested in entrepreneurship, then really make use of this offering. 
So, and now application procedure. Our application procedure is very streamlined. We have four application rounds. The next application round would be October 28th, then January 6th, March 10th, and the last one will be April 14th. So if you are an international, I would really recommend you to apply in round one or two because of that percentage top that we do keep a steady, like it's 38%. Um, in addition, it works like this, that you can go to our website and there you can click on apply. This doesn't mean that you automatically submit your application, but this allows you to enter the application center. In that application center, you can see what kind of documents you have to upload for your application. It's all online. And you also can see the additional requirements that we do have. So you will have to upload your GMAT or GRE score result. And in the online application as well, there is an essay that you have to fulfill. So go ahead of time, take your time to write that essay. We also require you to submit us recommendation letters, like rec references. This can also be initiated through that online application system. In addition, it allows you also to see upcoming events on every campus. So once you have submitted the online application form, you will review your application and you will be invited to an interview. If you are located in China, this can happen on our Shanghai campus. If you're located outside of China, um, you're welcome to do it over a video interview. After this interview, we will go through your whole application again and then go through this final review. And within, um, I think, two weeks usually from the interview, depends if there is a holiday in between, you get a notification if you have been admitted or if you not have been admitted. And I would like to highlight again here in our program, there is a minimum requirement of two years of work experience. We do also offer scholarships and financial aid. There are different scholarships offered. They're merit-based, they're need-based solutions as well. Um, you don't have to upload an extra form. If you apply to SIPs, we automatically review your application if you would be applicable for scholarship. Around a third of the MBA cohort has some kind of scholarship or financial ad that they're being offered. Just one thing I want to point out here is that if you're applying or if you would like to be considered for a scholarship, make sure you apply in run one or two because after one run and two, there might be a very reduced chance of some scholarships still being available. Yeah, like I already said, um, my colleagues here that are joining today are Xi Wen Xu from the Thieb Shanghai campus. I um, hope to see him on screen soon. And I'm also joined today by our current MBA class students, Ms. Rita Wei and Mr. Clark Gao. So thank you so much for joining the session with me today. And this opens also up for the Q&A section of this session with SIPs. Also, if you do have a question that you don't want to ask publicly here, uh, you can see mine and Chivan Chu's email address below our picture. Feel free to email us anytime. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Marianne. I think, uh, I think I'd love to start with letting, um, letting uh, Shivanchu and, and the, both of the students introduce themselves and give a little bit of a background of their experiences. Uh, great. Uh, thanks, Brendan. So I'll, I'll start off. Uh, Marianne, could you move to the previous slide as well? Uh, I think it'll be more convenient that way. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, uh, I hope everybody is doing well wherever you are uh, in high spirits, hopefully. Uh, so I'm Shivanshu. I'm part of the marketing and admissions team in Shanghai. Uh, as you can see, I'm, an also, I'm, I'm also an alumnus of the MBA program. I graduated in 2019. Uh, prior to MBA, I was working as an engineer with Mitsubishi Electric in India. Uh, I'm also originally from India. Uh, the reason I uh, decided to do an MBA was because uh, I was looking for a global adventure. Uh, I want, I, as many of you, I also aspired to become a global professional, uh, and MBA seemed the right way for uh, you know me to to uh, get closer to that goal. Uh, while um, um, while uh, choosing the schools, of course, uh, the rankings was was the main source that I used. Um, Sebs was. Uh, not my top priority until I visited the city Shanghai and I visited the campus. 
so like uh, uh, some of you know, we do have a boot camp program, which is like a one week program um, and that you can come here, you can live on campus, you can um, you know experience the classes, the company visits and alumni networking sessions. Um, so that really gives you a very good reflection of how the real program is going to look like. Uh, I attended the bootcamp program back in 2016 I was, and I was so amazed uh, by the city, uh, by the faculty, uh, by the school's resources. Uh, and that's when, you know, I realized that, you know, there's a, so much uh, gap between the perception and uh, the actuality uh, of Shanghai as a city um, and also, um, you know, seats as a, as, a, as a business school. Uh, so hence, I, I decided to join SEEPS for my MBA program. Um, and yes, uh, now I'm working in marketing admissions department. Uh, so over to Rita to introduce herself. I think you're uh, muted, oh, Rita. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Rita. Um, so a little bit of background about myself. Um, I was born in Guangzhou, China, but I grew up in Vancouver, Canada, and I went to school in Montreal, um, where I got my bachelor's and master's um, in, in architecture. And upon graduation, I returned to Hong Kong to work as an infrastructure architect. After a few years of working, um, I felt like I fulfilled my personal dream of being an architect and, you know, serving the public good with my design skills. And therefore, I decided to return to my family business in Guangzhou. Um, however, because I lacked that kind of business insight and business background, I decided to pursue an MBA to bridge the gap between architecture design skills and the real practice in the business world. And the reason why I've chosen Steve's is because it's not only you know taught in English, which is perfect for me, but also because um, of the fact that it's got the global breadth and China depth that I've been looking for so that I can better practice business in China. And um, just a little bit of insight for you guys for the first couple of days that I've had um, on campus, it's actually been extremely um, challenging and exciting at the same time because we're meeting you know 120 people at the same time. Our days have been packed with like four or five classes each day from nine to um, 6.30. However, the energy level is super high and every day I feel like I'm learning so much, not only from my classes, but also from my peers. So it has been an extremely wonderful experience so far. So next up um, to Clark, my peer, please. All right, cool, thanks Rita. <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, my name is Clark. I have a very similar background, uh, I mean, experience as Rita. I was born in China, uh, but when I was 13, my family immigrated to Canada as well. So I went to school in Toronto uh, upon graduation. Well, I mean, I studied statistics and computer science in University of Toronto. And after graduation, uh, I moved to uh, Bay Area, San Francisco. Uh, and for the past five years, I've been working as a data scientist in various uh, technology companies. So my latest position was a data scientist at LinkedIn, uh, where I was helping the product and operation teams to design their core metrics and help to design algorithms to um, help them with the daily operation. So the, I choose um, MBA as my next uh, um, step because um, when I was working as a data scientist, I actually have to involve closely uh, in a lot of data related pro product development. Uh, during the, along the way, I, I kind of developed interest in different part of the product life cycle rather than just provide the analytical insights. So I want to leverage business school to kind of boost my career uh, into the next level. And hopefully I can uh, try something new uh, after graduation. So the, and the reason I choose SEEPS as my target school because, um, you know, I, I moved to Canada when I was 15 and stayed there. I mean, stayed in North America ever since. And I kind of knew very little about the China market and China has changed tremendously you know, in every social economical aspect. So I decided to come back to China and because Zips has this famous uh, slogan, China depths and global breadth. So I kind of feel like it is a good like step stone for me to um, study a year and a half here and then um, enter the China market. So 
as Rita has been saying, we have started the, the program a uh, week now. It has been really busy and exciting at the same time. Um, we had a lot of activities, events. Uh, at the same time, you have to do your uh, read your cases, do your assignments, uh, and homework. So, I mean, everything is just happening at the same time. Uh, I still trying to find a word to describe it, but it's it's really hard to find a word. So, I mean, overall, it's like a really amazing experience. Um, and Shanghai is a great city. Uh, there's all kinds of party going on. So. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> uh, that's all from my side. Thank you, guys. Fantastic. So, uh, so Marianne, would you like to move into some Q and A? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. And I do see some uh, questions in the chat, so I'll go ahead and throw those up, and then we can clarify any of those questions. And then I do have some uh, some general questions that have been posted to the forums as well. Um, I do see one question coming up here from Gonzalo asking specifically about when period seven finishes, February or April, and then what is in between those months, it looks like. I guess. Yes, uh, so basically the, the, uh, the term seven finishes in mid-April, uh, and the graduation is usually, in, uh, 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 sorry, uh, the term seven finishes in mid-February, uh, but since it takes time for the grades to be evaluated, uh, the graduation actually happens in early April. Uh, so during that time, basically, uh, people um, usually um, need more time for the interviews, to prepare for the interviews. And since most of the companies have five, six rounds of interviews for every position, um, so I think that that level of flexibility is also helpful to the students. Ah, very good. Thank you so much. And then following up maybe on the, the work experience that you were speaking on, Marianne, there was a question regarding if... Um, <clears throat> if Siebes looks at work experience during any full-time schooling, or if it's just post-schooling, uh, I guess, full-time experience that Siebes looks at. Oh, it's the full-time experience before you start the MBA. So let's say you apply in round one, and the, day, the time that you take while you have applied till the program starts, that's going to be taken in account for your program start, yeah. Okay, Fan fantastic. And then I would definitely want to involve uh, both of the current students as well. So I'm going to ask uh, some more some more general questions to get everybody's opinion. And I think right now one of the one of the big questions, um, and I don't have a, a specific banner for it, but is just uh, we've been going through some interesting times the past seven months. Um, a lot of a lot of work has moved virtual. And so I'm curious how that affects on campus activities, on maybe any clubs or schooling, and uh, maybe Marianne and Shivanshu, you can ask, you can speak from the um, from the schooling side, and then I'd love to hear the current students and how they're adapting and, and some of the on-campus life because of uh, the the current situation as well. Yes, uh, so luckily in China, uh, things got under control very soon and we resumed our on-campus classes in May. Uh, mm -hmm. So ever since that time, uh, you know, we've been having regular classes. We have, we've been having uh, China domestic modules as schedule as well. Um, so everything is business as usual. Of course, uh, given the, you know, trying times, we had to adjust our schedule for the class of 2022 a little bit. Uh, so Rita and Clark, their classes were supposed to start in August, but then we made a decision to push it to October. Uh, so these two have just started their classes uh, one week ago. Um, but yeah, they've been going to classes regularly. Um, no need to worry about that here in Shanghai. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, uh, you know, this year, because we could not, get our international students to our Shanghai campus, but given the border control. Uh, so we have actually sent all of our international students to uh, Zurich campus. Uh, actually, we wanted some of our international students to join us today as well. But as we speak, they are in a class right now. Uh, so I think Marianne can explain a little bit more about our Zurich option this year. Yeah, like she and she already said, we're in the very privileged um, situation that we have multiple campuses around the globe, right? And so we were able to offer our international students who couldn't join right now the Shanghai campus to come to the Zurich campus. And I think that's something really important that we can give this kind of stability that we're not just moving our program completely online. We have this hybrid solution. And this also allows um, the class at the same time to see their peers on the Shanghai campus 
Um, we're involving both sides, Zurich and Shanghai, together in all activities like student ambassador programs, committees, student clubs. I think there will be even a student club set up uh, them like next week or something like here in Zurich on the initiative of Zurich students. And obviously, hopefully, once the travel restrictions are lift that we can kind of unify these two classes again together. But from my perspective, I think the students are very happy and they can interact a lot uh, also with their Sa Shanghai peers. Mm -hmm. Maybe Rita or Clark want to add something from that perspective, how you experiencing this kind of hybrid model. Not sure if the connection is stable. Oh, I think Rita, you're on, on mute. Actually, um, it's actually my first experience to be, you know, in a virtual classroom with uh, 40 other students in Zurich. And I think it's actually very interesting. Okay. The school has done the Oh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, so it's it's actually been um it's been an amazing learning experience for for me and the class you know to learn to learn virtually and to interact with people virtually. Um, I mean the school has done a great job at you know uh, facilitating the tech support so that we can run it as smoothly as an in class experience that we would otherwise have. And at the same time, not only is um, a virtual classroom a great learning curve for all of us, we've also learned to how to interact with um, our Zurich peers um, via WeChat or any other sort of um, platform. Um, and that's that's also a great learning experience for us because, you know, like as today's day and age, um, it's very important to learn to interact with other people virtually. So um, actually, via this chance, I, um, I got to meet other Zurich people and and found someone that had a, a similar interest in the club with me. And I might collaborate with that person to run for some of the club leadership positions. Mm. That's great. Thank you so much for that. And uh, and uh, kind of discussing a little bit about what you touched on, Marianne, earlier is uh, is a little bit of the language skills that come with uh, come with the university and and uh, hoping you can shed some light. I know you spoke on um, that the program is English, but you are required to take some some language courses. However, it looks like some people may have concerns about what uh, what the language barrier may do for recruiting options. So I'd love to love to get your feedback on uh, maybe if there are any language bar barriers in terms of recruiting specifically in China and then maybe uh, recruiting elsewhere. And then um, once again, from the current students, if they've had any experiences with those language barriers, that'd be great as well. Yeah, so I'd like to take that question because I myself was an MBA student, uh, a foreign MBA student here in China with very basic Mandarin skills. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, I would like to mention that in every foreign country you go to that's non that's a non-native English speaker, you would need, uh, you know, for certain roles, you would need to know the local language. And you don't need to know the basic, but you need to know business proficiency level. Uh, so it's a, it's a whole new level altogether. So here in China, uh, you know, uh, and in SIEBS as well, uh, most of our international students, they go for roles that are specifically meant for international students uh, and also in companies which are very international. Uh, of course, you know, your uh, companies are not going to recruit you for client facing roles that, you know, really require you to speak very good Chinese, um, you know, and in which, you know, basic Mandarin skills won't be enough. So when the companies are hiring you, they're, they're hiring you uh, for your other skills and not your Mandarin skills. Uh, so for example, most of the international students, they fit into roles such as strategy, marketing, or even overseas uh, business development. Um, so in, in Shanghai, if you come, you'll see you know, it's a very expat friendly city. Uh, there are many, many foreigners who are working here. Um, so again, it's, it's a great experience. Uh, and also there's so many opportunities that even for international students, you know, who do not have Mandarin uh, business proficiency, uh, they do get very good uh, jobs in uh, multinational companies. There we go. That was a great answer. Marianne, did you have something to add there? I just wanted to add, I understand this is a fear that comes up a lot of times uh, that fresh MBA students have. As someone who has been working in China before myself, I would completely like, yeah, confirm what Ashim and Chu just said. It depends really on the role you're trying to apply for and the size of the company you're applying for. But then I also would like to highlight that 
if you're 18 months in China and you engage with your classmates, with your peers, you go out of the campus environment, you really engage in the market and everything, and you put in some efforts and you attend the Chinese Mandarin classes that you do have on campus, it should be possible to reach a comfortable level so that you can go around and have these kind of discussions. Thank you so much. Um, and then, so additionally, one, um, so I kind of want to talk on the application side, since uh, there are definitely some potential um, students applying this year. And, I, and I'd like to come at this question from two ways. Um, people are asking, well, what aspects uh, do you look for in a candidate that help you decide if they're fit or unfit? And then for both the current students and, um, and then for Revanchu as well, what do you see in your peers that really stands out and makes you realize that they are a good leader in the program? Um, let me maybe start with the basic requirements and then Shivanshu can take over with the more um, qualitative answers here. So what we look basically with the application criteria is that you do have a minimum of two years work experience, that you do have a bachelor's degree, right? And there should be a certain interest in Asia and China. So if you're planning to just work, for example, in the German market, and you're completely uninterested in Asia, this certainly wouldn't be the right fit, neither for the school nor for you, right? So these are certain aspects that we're looking for. Then English proficiency, so that you can follow the class. This is gonna be evaluated in the interview as well. And yeah, that you upload and literally follow the application documents that are required. Uh, yes, so like uh, Marianne mentioned, you know, we want people with genuine interest in China and Asia. Uh, so we do not really want people who are applying to us just because we are ranked one of the top business schools in the world. Uh, we want you to, you know, tell us through your application, you know, that you've done your research, that you really know, you know, what, what what's the situation here, what kind of courses we are being taught and what kind of curriculum we have here. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, our, our motto, China Depth Global Breadth really uh, summarizes uh, what we are all about. Uh, so if you can, you know, stress upon that through your application, that that really tells us that, you know, you're, you're really interested in our program in particular. Uh, also, you know, um, it, it's a big investment. MBAs aren't really cheap. Uh, so not just for ourselves, but for the candidates as well. It's It's very important for us to get the right people instead of the best people. Uh, so yeah, and um, I think Clark and Rita can share how uh, their classmates are and you know what, what really common or what common traits they find uh, in each other. Sure, I, I can I can go uh, first, I guess. Um, I mean from I, I can talk about first my my own perspective, like some uh, suggestions or like comments to the prospective students like when you're preparing for your application uh please be be real about your personal stories and uh like shuin shuin marina was mentioning uh, you have to really make a connection about your motivation and your uh your application like why you want to join seeps why you want to come to china and why you want to do your mba program uh and after you know, having the talk with my uh, fellow students, uh, I, I find out that most of them have like a very strong goal, personal goal or career goal. Um, and and like despite the various like background or experience, um, like they, they are all working towards a common goal where like, you know, they, they want to have the next uh, career play uh, happening in China or Asian area and they want to learn more about the Chinese market and how, uh, you know, how the, the modern China or Chinese uh, business was, uh, was done, um, things like that. So that's, that's my um, observation. Uh, anything to add, Rita? Um, absolutely. Um, Clark, I think I definitely agree with you on that. So first of all, definitely be authentic, um, be genuine about who you are. And the second, the, the second point is about to be able to tell your story about, you know, where you're coming from and like where you think, you know, what, what you think, um, seeps can bring you or help you with, um, make that statement really clear and where you would want to go next to after seeps and do tie in the Chinese element in your whole narrative, uh, when you're telling the story, cause, um, Otherwise, you know, just wouldn't be a great fit because um, Steve's is looking for someone who's also interested in China as well. So, yeah. 
Those are all fantastic points. Thank you for that. And I know I know there are a lot of prospe prospective students that will listen to this and and being genuine in your application is something that uh, yeah. people don't always consider. Uh, they just try to meet the requirements that are listed online, but they forget to show themselves in their application. So thank you very much for your input there. Um, I would like to jump a little bit on recruiting as well. Um, I know I'm not extremely well versed in what's happening in China right now, but I know you uh, you spoke on that things are getting better. However, there is some border control um, uh, kind of issues that have prevented some students. So I think a question may be how are recruiting events planned for this year? Uh, maybe maybe discussing how it's split between the Zurich campus and then the opportunities in China. Are there any plans moving forward to uh, maybe collaborate between the two on recruiting? I guess how does that how does that work? And is there anything you can share with people who are looking at the program? Uh, yes, yeah, so in a, in a usual year, we do have recruiting events all around the world, but uh, this year uh, we've, we've cut down on our international events, uh, at least the offline events. So we've moved all of our uh, offline events online uh, outside of China. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's very important for us to keep ourselves safe as well. Um, but again, you know, because uh, in the last few months, we've also seen, you know, how, how fast the technology has adapted. Uh, and, you know, the events like this uh, that we're doing right now is, is a perfect example of, you know, how, how many people from around the world can come together on the same platform and have a conversation. So uh, these things are really helpful to us. Um, in China, we're having uh, events um, on campus as well. And also we're traveling to different cities. Uh, last Saturday, we had an uh, MBA uh, exclusive lecture. So many prospective uh, students came to campus. They had a lecture by our professor, an MBA intro session, and also a campus tour uh, with some of our current students. Uh, so th that's uh, how you know we were sort of planning our um, recruitment events. Uh, Marianne, if you would like to add something to that. Yeah, I just wanted to add that because I'm not quite sure if the question only asks about how we recruit students, but also because just mentioned a consulting role. Um, Surrey campus is in line with the Shanghai campus for the student recruitment, as I'm also involved with the career development center uh, for, a con for a recruitment from our students by companies. I can just add that these events are happening simultaneously, mostly online um, with recruitment talk and campus visits um, for both cohorts, the one in Zurich and in Shanghai. At the same time, if a speaker, for example, fulfills the health criteria, he's allowed on campus to give a direct insight in how companies are recruiting. And we're still um, also having all the career development uh, activities offline and online as the speakers are comfortable with and our students as well. So this hasn't been put on hold and there's different ways the companies have figured out. Uh, sorry, I misunderstood that question. I was, uh, I thought it was on a student recruitment side on, on, on our end. Uh, but yes, like Marianne fair. mentioned, we, we are still you know, going full steam with the career uh, development services. Uh, mm -hmm. Our team is here in Shanghai and as well uh, in, in Zurich campus as well. Uh, so a lot of events that were supposed to be off, uh, offline are online. Uh, the, the, the career fair that happened in January was uh, happened before uh, the pandemic struck so that happened off, uh, offline on campus uh, but there were many such events after that uh, which which we had to take uh, online um, every almost every day these days we are having company recruitment talks online uh, i think there was uh, a recruitment talk by jp morgan yesterday and then a couple of days ago by by microsoft so mm -hmm. uh, yes the companies are collaborating with us uh, just as usual uh, instead of coming to campus they're just doing it uh, remotely. Mm, it, fantastic. And yeah, no, so it was geared towards the the career, but I'm actually glad that you spoke on on the actual recruitment as well. So that that kind of helped that I forgot to specify yeah. that. So thank you for that. Um, but Clark and Rita, I would like to get your opinion as well. Have you been taking advantage of these uh, remote kind of company? I know we just spoke, uh, I think you spoke about, um, was it was it Visa or MasterCard it gave a presentation? I'm curious if Clark or Rita, you've been uh, taking part in these company presentations and how that's been. Um, I, I haven't got a chance to attend to these uh, virtual events. I mean, there was one event I, I, I was in it for like 15 minutes and I had some other things. And like <laughs> I was saying, like the first week is just super busy. It's so packed with uh, 
all the different things. So, uh, but but like I can talk about something else. So I am actually running the technology club this year. Uh, the, the advantage of you know this the Twin City module gives us access to both Zurich networks and China China networks. So my teammates, actually one of the teammates, he is received like in the Zurich campus right now, and he is connecting with the alumni in Europe uh, in the technology industry. And we're actually making connections to our uh, China alumni network. So this actually gives us a bigger pool of you know uh, connections or uh, people we can talk to. So, yeah. Thank you, Clark. And, and I do see that we are running up on time. We have about three more minutes. So I do want to give just kind of a kind of a last plug and Marianne, uh, Shivansu, Clark, or Rita, if there's anything that, that we missed that you would love to jump in and just kind of uh, give any prospective students or uh, anybody just thinking about applying, I'd love to give you that give you that chance if there's anything else that you think we, we should touch on. Well, just wanted to mention that the next application round is in seven days. So if you're decided already, but you're worried maybe about, ooh, will my Gmail address will come in in time? Will I be able to provide you with the um, with the reference letters in time? In such a case, uh, please email Shivan Shu for Asian candidates or European candidates, me directly. You can see the email here again, and we will try to figure out how we could handle such a situation. Yes, and that's, <clears throat> that's definitely a great point. I do want to make sure that everybody takes in uh, uh, takes a look at the the emails that are listed, and then this will also be saved to YouTube. So if you're uh, if you're wondering what their emails are, again, you can always just rewatch, and, and it should be there. Um, but I do want to to thank everybody for joining that that came on online and have been asking your questions. Uh, that definitely helps students uh, as they go and rewatch these videos, and they may have some of the same questions. Uh, but always feel free to hop on the GMAT Club forum, ask your questions there. Um, and like Marianne said, please look at their emails. And if you have any direct questions, please reach out there. And, and I do want to thank everyone here for your time as well. Marianne, Chivansu, uh, Rita, and Clark, thank you so much for the uh, for the responses. I know everybody appreciates these sessions, and uh, we're really glad to hear from you guys. Thank you so much, Brennan. It was really a pleasure being here. And yeah, thank you for the organization, right? Um, yes, of course. So uh, we will go ahead and sign off now. And then, like I said, this will be a saved video. So feel free to come back and watch at any time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.